Today, we're going to cover the Circle of the Stars Druid. It's uh, found in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and I'll be honest with you, it's really, really powerful. Some people say overpowered, and I know that it has its criticisms, but I think every class has to have its most powerful subclass. And Circle of the Stars, definitely at low levels, it's one of the most powerful things you can choose. Let's find out why. Now, the Circle of the Stars allows Druids to draw on the power of starlight. The Druids have tracked heavenly patterns since time immortal, discovering secrets hidden amid the constellations. Uh, this is a really cool subclass because it allows you to not rely on the Feral, uh, how would I describe it, eco-warrior style Druid. You can go with a archaeologist stereotype or something else. You can use it to kind of fit the mold. And uh, let's have a look at the level 2 abilities. The first one you get is Star Map, which in my opinion is incredibly overpowered. You get Guidance, which is one of the best cantrips in the game. The best non-combat cantrip in the game, at least. And it, that allows you to add a d4 to most uh, ability checks. And if you don't have this, then you're putting your party at a little bit of a disadvantage. I know some DMs are very strict about allowing this, because it can be very frustrating when people are just adding d4s to every single roll. Uh, so, as a rule of thumb, most DMs say if you don't audibly call it, you can't retroactively apply guidance. You also get Guiding Bolt, and you, this is not normally in the Druid spell kit, but here's the crazy thing. You can cast it for free, equal to the proficiency bonus. And I'm assuming that's just at level 1, but still... Guiding Bolt is a really powerful damaging range spell, so you can be like a back of the party blaster with this. Of 46 radiant damage. At lower levels, radiant damage is... I don't think anything's immune to radiant damage. You have to start going higher up in the uh, CR to find something. And of course you have to allow it the next attack on the creature advantage. So it's kind of similar to Fairy Fire in that effect, but 46 at level 2 as an action and then I think once you've used up all of these spell slots which are really powerful you can just east form into what I'll show you next oh, quick note the star map it gives you some ideas of what you can use for the star map the small object that you get that's the druid spell casting focus uh, for example my favorite is glass discs that depict constellations just the idea of uh, some optometrist that's carrying loads of glass discs around and uh, complete dits, but has powerful powers to do with the stars and the moonlight and the cosmos is uh, really flavorful. This wouldn't be out of space. This wouldn't be out of place in a spelljammer campaign, if I'm being honest with you. This is the crazy part. You can throw out guiding bolts, and then as a bonus action, you can wild shape into starry form which in subsequent turns allows you to choose between dealing lots of extra damage as a bonus action. Uh, you can go for Archer for that. You can go for Chalice if you want to boost up your healing abilities, which I don't think it interacts with Goodberry because it says whenever you cast a spell using spell slot that restores hit points to a creature. I think it's only for things like Healing Word and uh, Spiritual Healing and uh, what's the other one? Cure Wounds? Yeah, Cure Wounds, that's it. One is a powerful enough option at level 2, but to have both of them in the same subclass is kind of overpowered. And then you have a third option. The Dragon. Uh, whenever you make an Intelligence or Wisdom check, or a Con save to maintain a concentration on a spell, you can treat a roll of 9 or lower on a d20 as a 10. So this has given you three different options when one of them's already powerful, two of them's overpowered, so three's kind of... You can pick and choose whichever one you want to use. And here's the kicker, when you get to level 10, all of these abilities get boosted up again. Cosmic Omen, at level 6. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can consult your star map for omens. So you can roll a die, and you can essentially give something similar to Bardic Inspiration. A creature within 30 feet of you is, when it makes an attack roll, a saving throw, or an ability check, you can use your reaction to roll a d6 and add it to the number total, or, if you choose Woe, you can just subtract a d6. So there's lots of utility here. It's tied to your proficiency bonus, so you can't use it ad infinitum. And it's not a short rest, it's a long rest. So, 
I'd say this is good. It's not amazing, but it allows you to buff up and assist the rest of the group. So you've got good damage, you've got good healing, you've got good party support. And when we get down to Twinkling Constellations at level 10, you'll see you've also got flying, which is kind of more of a sorcerer ability. But uh, yeah, I think there are a couple of druids that can use flying. For example, I believe Circle of the... I forget which one. I think it's Circle of the Shepherd that allows you to well shape into higher creatures. Twinkling Constellations. Basically, when you choose Archer, you get an extra D8, so that's 2D8 damage for a bonus action, which is already powerful enough as it is. When Dragon is active, you can get a flying speed of 20 feet and you can hover, which I think at level 10 is on curve with the powerful abilities. It's not overpowered. There are other classes that get this ability. For example, you can fly with a wizard, and uh, I think the other one is 2d8 uh, Chalice as well. So yeah, you're boosting up healing. But here's the strange thing though. Full of stars at level 14. It feels out of place. Moon Circle is the one that is just well chip focus. You become incorporeal when you go into your starry form. So you gain resistance to BPS, bludgeoning, piercing and slashing. Which, it feels like... A low level barbarian ability it feels out of place on the druid because druids are a little bit squishy they've got a d8 instead of a d10 for hit dice and they're not allowed certain types of armor but i don't think it's a really good level 14 ability it feels like it's just tacked on to the end and because the low level abilities are so powerful they've put a weak ability on the level 14. Oh, cool. Glad to have you. Glad you had a good Christmas, Yoda. To, uh, <clears throat> did Santa get you anything special? Well, I'm just here to spread the love, spread the positivity. And if anyone else out there that has a subclass they want me to cover in the future, send me an email and I'll see what I can do. So no promises, but if I get time in the future, I'd love to try and cover some more subclasses try and put a spotlight and focus on some of the smaller content creators. Overall, I'd say the Circle of Stars is has more healing than Dreams, it has more damage at low levels than Wildfire, and I think it's just got better utility than most of the other subclasses. So I'd definitely give it an S in the rankings of Druid subclasses. But uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. If you want to leave me a comment in the comments, then uh, I'll get back to you as soon as possible.